What's going on guys? If you're in quarantine and you're like me and you just can't sit still and watch movies all day inside, then I've got the best solution for you. You can learn parkour. So these are 10 easy moves that most able people should be able to learn with a little bit of practice and almost no obstacles. So most of these you should be able to do on the ground in your house or even just with a couch. So let's start off super easy. The first move we're going to work on today is the backflip. No, I'm totally joking. That's a little too advanced. We're going to start off with a palm spin. So to do a palm spin, I'm going to be using the corner of this couch over here and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like so you can see what kind of obstacle you can find in your house to do it. That's all there is to it. Also, I just want to give a little disclaimer. If you're a kid, you want to make sure you ask your parents before doing parkour all over your couch in your house because you don't want to get hurt or you don't want to damage the furniture. All right, so I'm going to start off by putting both of my hands on the obstacle. And with this couch over here, I'm going to be putting one on the corner like this and the other one like this over here. That way, when I push off of it, I can rotate around the left hand over here and push off of this one to get some momentum. So we're going to start off with a few progressions first. So the first progression you can use is just jumping over the obstacle instead of rotating. So what I'm going to do is place my hands just like I just showed you and then I'm just going to jump to the ground on the other side by lifting my legs over the couch. That's it. Now the next progression is to do the pump spin but put a foot down on the couch before landing on the ground. So it's going to look a little bit like this. So ideally the goal with the pump spin is to land back on the same side that you jumped on. So if I jump on this side of the couch, ideally, I'd want to land on this side of the couch as well. You want to make sure you do those progressions as many times as you have to until you're comfortable doing the full thing, which looks a little bit like this. Now obviously you want to make sure your couch is solid and doesn't slip like it just did now. So I'm just going to shove this a little more in the corner and show you guys some slow motions. Whoa, the couch disappeared! That's right, because for this one, we don't need any obstacles, we just need the ground. So this one's called the shoulder roll or parkour roll. Super useful, probably the most important trick in parkour because we use it to absorb landings and stuff. Now the only thing is I don't recommend that you learn this on hardwood like me. I recommend that you learn it on carpet or even maybe your bed. The reason is if you don't roll properly, you can hurt your shoulder or your spine on the ground and you can bruise yourself. That being said, the move is not dangerous at all. You won't get hurt. It might just be a little uncomfortable. So you're gonna start off in the crouch position just like I am. You wanna make sure you start off close to the ground so that it's just easier to control your momentum. Now I'm gonna be rolling over my left shoulder so I'm gonna be putting my hands on the side like this to the right side. So by having my hands in a 45 degree angle sideways, it just makes it easier for me to roll over that shoulder. So the reason for this is you don't want to roll directly over your head because that makes it dangerous when you have a lot of momentum. So we're going to roll from one shoulder to the opposite side of our back. For me, that means left shoulder to the right side of the back in a diagonal line like this. So once you're ready, you have your hands on the ground like this and you slowly roll over the shoulder on that line on the back like I just showed you. Just to be safe, we're going to practice that a bunch of times and staying on the ground by rolling over the shoulder and landing on the side of the leg like this. And once you're comfortable doing that, then you want to make sure you speed it up a little and get onto your feet instead. Now we can start playing around with it and you can start doing some small jumps into it to make sure that you're using the momentum properly. So the next move is called precision jumps and it's real fun because we can use our stairs for this and it's like a game. You just try to go to the next step until you've reached your max. So I'm going to start off by just jumping from here onto the first step and trying to stick the landing. So what helps to stick the landing is you want to be on the ball of your feet so that's the front of the foot and then you want to have your knees slightly bent and your arms in front. The reason for this position is it helps you control and balance. 
So usually in parkour, we'd have a precision jump from one obstacle to another that is much further, but all we have are stairs, so we're gonna try and go higher instead. So once you're comfortable with that, we're gonna go to the second step. And if you wanna build up your power and be better at jumping, you can also connect them. So try and hit your max every time. So I'm gonna try and do five steps and then five steps again, all the way to the top. Now the next move I'm gonna show you guys is called the safety ball. And we're gonna be using a couch again for this one. So you wanna make sure that you use a couch or an obstacle with a solid back because we're gonna be putting a lot of our weight onto it. So this trick's really easy to learn because you can take it step by step. But we're just gonna start off by putting one hand on the obstacle and then the opposite foot on the obstacle too. So since I'm putting my right hand, I'm gonna put on my left foot. Then all you have to do is bring your other leg through the gap onto the sitting part of the couch like this. Now, like I said, you wanna make sure that you've got a solid couch because you don't wanna step onto something that's not solid or perhaps break the couch. So again, make sure you ask your parents. Might not look like much, but when you speed it up, it starts to look like this. So the next move I'm gonna teach you guys is a cartwheel. And for those of you who do gymnastics, it's gonna look a little bit different because in parkour, we do it sideways. One of the reasons for this is so we can do a trick after. So we'll do a car wheel and do an Arabian after, or we'll just do a side flip. That way until we stay on the same axis. So again, with this one, we're not gonna need any obstacles. We're just gonna use a lot of room. And we're gonna start off in a sideways position like this. So I'm gonna be going to my left over here. So I'm gonna start off by putting the left hand on the ground first. Then soon after that, my right hand's gonna come over. So one of the mistakes you wanna avoid is getting your hand around like this. If you get your hand around like this too much, you're gonna do a sideways thing like this. And that's not what you want because you're gonna look like a noob. So after you put the first hand, you wanna reach over with the other hand like this. The ideal goal with this is to keep all your hands and feet on a straight line. So you can find a line on the ground and try and get your hands and your feet on that line all the time. So once that first hand is on the ground, you're gonna kick up with the other foot to bring it over. The faster and harder that you kick that leg up over your body, the easier the cartwheel is gonna be because if you have no momentum, you're gonna do that sideways thing again by ugh. So again, we don't want that. You wanna kick up with your leg like this. As you just saw, once your feet are in the air, you're gonna land back on the ground one foot at a time. So if my right leg was the one that was kicking over, that's the first one that's gonna land on the other side. So this might just look like gymnastics to you guys, but we use it all the time in parkour and free running with combos and even in tricking, looks a little bit like this. The next move is called the two-handed vault and I'm gonna be using the couch again. Looks a little bit like this. This move is really cool for beginners to get over rails and obstacles outside, but since we're in quarantine, we're just gonna be doing it in our house. So I'm just gonna start off putting both my hands on the couch like this. And then I'm just gonna get my feet over to the other side of the obstacle. So if you're using a couch like me, you just wanna make sure that you get your legs high enough that you don't clip the back of the couch over here. Because then you could potentially face plant or something like that if you clip your feet and then... <laughs> Obviously that was fake, but I don't want that to happen to you guys, so make sure you're safe. If you have a solid enough couch and enough space after, you can practice kind of running into it and running out of it. I don't have much space before, but I have some space after. Now this one's a little more advanced and I don't recommend it for anyone that doesn't have soft ground. It's called the kip up. Also gonna take off my socks because I don't wanna slip on this slippery hard wood. So the first thing you want to do with this trick is you're going to crouch down 
so that you don't have too much momentum. So I'm going to start off like this, and then I'm going to do a partial back roll onto the top of my shoulders. So you want to make sure that you stop when most of your weight is at the top of your shoulders, and you also want to put your hands on the ground like this. Also, if you notice, my legs were up and close to my face. That way, they're ready to kick up to get momentum. So you want to practice that a couple times. Make sure you're comfortable with it. Just putting your hands and getting your legs up. So at this point, you pretty much just have to go for it. You want to make sure that you push off the ground with your hands and your shoulders, and you also want to kick up with your legs at the same time, and you want to make sure that you reach for the ground with your legs after they kick up. So what that means is you kick up with your legs towards this angle to make sure you get momentum, but once they've kicked, you want to make sure they aim for the ground so that you can land on your feet. Kind of like this. This next one's a little more free running than parkour, but it's the handstand. As usual, we're gonna start off with progressions, and there's two types of progressions that we can do for it, and both involve a wall. So the first one is we're gonna slowly walk up the wall like this. Hands on the ground. So if you have soft ground, you can actually practice going into a handstand from that position without using the wall, and if you go too far, you just go into a forward roll. Now the next progression is basically the same thing, but the other way. So you want to handstand into the wall facing the other way. You see how I can stop myself with my feet, and then with my feet I can push myself away from the wall to try and keep the handstand. And if you fall, boom, that's it. Once you're comfortable with those, you can just do it without the wall as support. Woo, sorry, just showing off. So when you do the handstand without the wall, what you want to do is put your hands on the ground and then kick your back leg to get your feet up. So you can practice mini hops like that, not going all the way up. You see how one foot's on the ground and the other leg is kicking? And then when you're comfortable, what you want to do is get the other foot that was on the ground last, join the other foot up in the air. So some tips I've received from gymnastics coaches for these is to try and keep your body straight and not have your legs leaning forward. A lot of people when they learn, they look like this. And that's cool and all, but sometimes it makes it hard to keep your balance. So you want to make sure that you keep your body straight. That way you use your core, your abs to get your balance. So this next one is called the lazy ball. It's a little hard to land without the proper obstacle because ideally I'd have something a lot thinner, but it's super fun to do indoors and land on your couch because you're gonna end up like this. <sighs> Which if you ask me, just makes the lazy name a lot more accurate. So first things first, we're gonna start off on the other side of the obstacle with your body sideways like this. Since my right hand is the closest to the obstacle, I'm going to put it on the couch like that, and then I'm going to kick my right leg over. So we can practice that a few times without actually jumping over the couch. So once that right leg kicks over, we're going to put on the left hand behind us. That second hand is going to come on the couch where the first hand was to replace it. So once that other hand's on, you remove the other one. And at the same time as you're doing that, you're also going to let your other leg join the other one that kicked over the couch. So it's going to look like this. First hand, first leg, and then second hand. So ideally, we'd have a thinner obstacle so that we could just keep running after. But all we have is a couch, so we can just practice it like this for now, landing sitting down. So 
So next up we got the backwards roll, which is another one that I don't recommend you do on hard ground because you can actually hit your head on this one. So definitely make sure you do it either on your bed or some carpet. So for this one, we're just gonna start off sitting on the ground like this because we don't want too much momentum and go out of control. The first thing you're gonna do is push off of your feet on the ground and then put your hands over your shoulder to the ground behind you. Push and then hands. The reason is, just like the forward shoulder roll, we're not gonna go directly over your head, especially with this one. So as you're doing it, you're gonna get your hands on one side and make sure that you tilt your head so that you don't hit it on the ground. And once you get over your head, you can just push off of your hands to get back on your feet. Although you do want to start slow, this one is harder without momentum. So once you're comfortable, then you can start speeding it up. So you might be thinking, what the heck is this crap? I've never seen it in parkour. But it's actually really useful when you're doing a backwards trick off an obstacle and you have too much momentum or too much height and you just want to over rotate safely. So that is it. Those are 10 tricks that you should be able to learn at home. And I'm so excited for you guys to try them. Make sure you let me know in the comments down below which tricks you've tried. Don't forget to click the subscribe button right over here to see more videos like this. Next up, you can watch my latest video by clicking over here. Or you can watch another cool video just like this one by clicking right here. And as usual, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.